Yeah, it's magnetic. Join Sorogeny on Caribbean Connections, Thursdays at 1. Walk through the sands with poetry from our great leaders and academics. Jive with us to soca, reggae, chutney, and calypso. Get your current cricket results, meet special guests, and more. Every Thursday, 11.30 Eastern, 1 p.m. Newfoundland time. Hi, this is uh, Vanellit from New York City, and you're listening to Swojini on the Caribbean Connection. Run it! Uh, this one on uh, the hit, yo, yo. Lady Sarojani. Bless up everyone. This is Trad and Ben from Jamaica here representing for the most, the host, Lady Sarojani with the Caribbean Connection Show. Hey, Pawa, 93.5 FM, CHMR. One one. That's a pardon me. I'm an no criminal, so get on your certain. But let me tell you, do if you never know, I'm an island man with an African culture. No drugs, no eat, I'm a bad. Welcome to Caribbean Connections. Uh, we have an awesome program for you here today. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Rama Singh and Dr. Kurshid Aman from McMaster University in Hamilton. And we will be talking about the 30th annual Kandi Peace Festival. Dr. Rama Singh is a professor in the Department of Biology at McMaster University. He is a founding chair of the annual Mahatma Gandhi Lectures on Nonviolence at McMaster University, 1996. A founding member of Gandhi Peace Festival in the city of Hamilton, 1993, and a co-founder of Mahila Shanti Sinha Women's Peace Brigade International in India, 2002. Dr. Kurshid Ahmed is retired from McMaster University, Faculty of Health Sciences. A lifelong peace activist, he has been a member of the Gandhi Peace Festival Organizing Committee and the editor of its annual publication, Living Gandhi Today. He strongly believes that Gandhi's message of nonviolence and sustainable living is very relevant today. This interview was recorded earlier by Zoom, and we certainly hope that you will enjoy it. Good afternoon. Welcome to Caribbean Connections. And here on the program, we have Dr. Rama Singh and Dr. Kurshid Ahmed. Uh, Dr. Singh and Dr. Ahmed, welcome to Caribbean Connections. Uh, here in St. John's and the beautiful island of Newfoundland and Labrador. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. <laughs> thank you yeah. very much, Sarojani, and thank you all your listeners <laughs> and thank for inviting you. us. <laughs> I know you both are in Ontario, so what's the weather like over there? Oh, it's beautiful here. Nice, about 20, 22 degrees. What? Oh my goodness! Yes. Mm. Oh, Sunny. Wow. Well, we we had some sun, but it's gone now. But we can certainly use more of your warm weather. So send it our way. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, um, I would really like to thank you both, uh, Rama and Krishi, to uh, for this opportunity to interview you today here for thirtieth annual. Gandhi Peace Festival, and I know we have a lot to talk about. And you two have been with the festival for a very long time, and I will get you to go more into the, the, the festival and what it's all about, what it yeah. means. But just for our listeners, the festival is named after Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, popularly known as Mahatma 
which means great soul. And it is actually the longest running peace festival in Canada. Wow. And this festival is an inclusive event that is dedicated to the promotion of peace, nonviolence, and social justice. So, Rama, I'll start with you. We can uh, get into um, the first thing we would like to know, the purpose of this peace festival. Well, <clears throat> the, the purpose of the peace festival when the it's, the, it's basically uh, try to work people together, bring the communities where we live, and always try to on individual issues which are local or national or uh, international, uh, try to bring the ideas of nonviolence, peace and justice, Gandhi and King. And when we started the Peace Festival, we did not have any long-term plan. Uh, to be uh, very clear, we wanted an annual event to bring people together and to uh, you know, uh, promote the, the concept of peace, nonviolence, and, and social justice. As time went on, you begin to think about <clears throat> more broader issues of peace, nonviolence, and social justice. And, and trying to how to promote and how to bring people together. And then the national and international issues become more important. So the purpose is basically to promote these ideas through people, through various issues, which are local, national, and international, and uh, try to uh, do and make some change. The purpose is not to worship Gandhi or just to have an annual event, and sometimes we are limited by resources, so we may end up doing annual things. But our intention is always to work as a community on social issues, promoting peace, nonviolence, and justice for everyone, for locally and nationally and internationally. So, so the, that's the idea of the Peace Festival. Yes, um, I was reading uh, some of uh, the information you sent to me, and this is from David Farrar, your president and vice chancellor of McMaster University in Hamilton. And he said that the importance of Gandhi's teachings of peace, nonviolence, and inclusivity challenges us to affect positive change. We all have a part to play in working to combat the racism and inequities that we see at the global level and also within our own communities. So Kurshid, I'll put this question to you. What I just read from the president and vice chancellor who gave this message last, at last year's festival, these words, in my opinion, are very impactful. For our listeners, what do you think he's meaning by this? Well, um, given the situation in the world, we see violence in at the national level, at the community level, and also in the families. Uh, so it really is very important for humanity to, to be free of violence as much as possible. And Gandhi offered very practical means of uh, living in peace and nonviolence and solving the problems of the world. So uh, I think what the, the president is, is uh, saying in my view is just repeating this message, um, uh, which is I think very important uh, uh, for the communities to come together McMaster has a tradition of working uh, and engage with the communities, uh, especially with the Hamilton community. And they have been a great supporter of the Peace Festival from the very beginning. Uh, there is a Center for Peace Studies in, uh, at the university, and mm -hmm. uh, they are partners to, to this festival, as is the city of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. So uh, if like to call Hamilton the city of peace or capital uh, of peace in Canada, because we really think that uh, 
uh, it is important to to profess the idea of nonviolence and and be part of it. Uh, it's, it's just so so obvious to me uh, that uh, problems cannot be solved with violence, and violence begets violence. It only gets into a spiral. So uh, with, one has to consciously educate people and uh, especially children that mm -hmm. the problems can be solved by dialogue and discussion rather than with violence of any form. Exactly. And um, from what I can tell, the festival has certainly grown in size over the last 30 years. And it's certainly become part of uh, Hamilton's cultural landscape, gaining recognition both nationally and internationally. And like you just said, Korshi, the festival is jointly sponsored by McMaster University, the City of Hamilton, the Inda India Canada Society, and a host of community and other partners. And from what I can tell, it's an excellent example of collaboration between the community and the academy. Um, going back to the festival, and maybe I will ask uh, Rama this question. The size has really grown. So from its early days, Rama, did the festival take on what it is today or did it evolve during time to what it is today? How did it start? What was the um, attendance like? Did everyone want it to be a part of the community and so on? So to answer it, uh, it's important to really uh, mention how the festival came about. Uh, in uh, India-Canada Society, which is a local cultural organization, was established in 1973. So in 1993, we were celebrating 20th anniversary of India Canada Society. In the city of Hamilton, a big parade and song and dance and cultural program. It was the best I have ever seen. And then immediately that particular year, uh, I realized that Dr. Karan Singh was on his way to Chicago to address the 100th anniversary of Vivekananda visit there, the, 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 the parliament of religion. So I was aware of that. And then until then, in the last three, four years, I have been quite connected to McMaster Center for Peace Study, which is started in 1989. So my idea was to have a Gandhi lecture at McMaster about which we will talk later. But immediately thought came to find a way to invite Dr. Karan Singh <laughs> and have that function we had at the city hall on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. The idea came rather than making an India-Canada cultural annual festival, make it a Gandhi annual peace festival. And from then on, Dr. Karim Singh gave a talk, inaugurated the lecture at McMaster informally, of course, which became formalized later on. Mm -hmm. And that also became the festival. So Gandhi Festival are not a pre-planned with the long-term goal of doing things. It basically grew out of India Canada Society. And as it time went, we began to think and promote because I'm a biologist, who see the biostatistics and health scientists. Many of my friends who are involved, some are from humanities and social sciences, but most of us from business, uh, you know, science and engineering and so on. So idea was about Gandhi's ideas. We are, I'm not a scholar of Gandhi, uh, neither by you know, practice uh, by any means. So over time, we tried our best to involve people and over time, McMaster University, Center for PC Study, uh, City of Hamilton, and of course, India, Canada Society, and more uh, lately, Population Health Research Institute, they, be they became the major sponsor. Uh, okay. Morale-wise, support-wise, 
But then we also have the wider support, you know, human rights, peace, and social and cultural organization. So peace festival has grown more in thought mm -hmm. than in action. In action, we still have annual peace festival. We are more organized now. We have a speaker designated. We have cultural program. We have yeah. a peace park. We provide, uh, you know, food to anywhere from two to three, four hundred people, hot lunch. So uh, the, the festival has grown. The size may not have grown that much, partly because whether we like or not, Gandhi Festival was first seen as an Indian festival. Mm. And some would say it's a Gandhi Festival, who is the Indian, uh, you know, uh, a great man. It is a happy uphill battle to convince people that it's not about Gandhi. So in parallel to the Peace Festival, we yes. have had many major events in the name of Gandhi and King, Gandhi, King, Mandela. And our aim has always been to focus on the message and the nonviolence, right? yes. not on Gandhi and India. Yeah. And so that, uh, that in itself has been an uphill battle part of the message. Mm -hmm. And I think this is not a problem of people or our people. In general, our society is divided between uh, invisible cultural groups. And when we do something, we get labeled. This is Indian, this is Canadian, this is Ukrainian, this is <laughs> American. And I think the world has come around now more than we are realizing, and we will talk later, that mm -hmm. it is time that we put away those differences. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yes. you know, I have grown up. <laughs> yeah, and grown in size, but idea more than in number. <laughs> right, and you know, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that it's not a Gandhi festival, mm -hmm. and as we stated earlier, it's inclusivity. That's what we're yeah. stressing. And um, Kurshi, we've been talking a lot about. Um, the Center for Peace Studies. And just for our listeners, mostly here in Newfoundland and Labrador, we can get our program on the web anywhere you are in the world. But um, I'll just mention this one thing. The Center for Peace Studies and Global Peace and Social Justice Program, which is formerly Peace Studies, it seeks to educate students and the community at large about past and ongoing injustices in our society. So I just thought I'll mention that so our listeners will understand uh, what is the Center for Peace Studies, what, what it is all about. Um, we don't have a particular Center for Peace Studies, but we have programs that will focus on that, you know. And Kurshid, I see that this is an annual event um, and it's usually held closest to Gandhi's birthday, correct? Correct, that's very true. Uh, yes. We always hold the event on a Saturday nearest to Gandhi's birthday. And uh, the other thing I might mention is that Every year we pick a different theme and uh, we try to cover the wide range of issues uh, depending on what is most important uh, social question at that time. Uh, this year we had quite a struggle whether we should be talking about the war in Ukraine or climate change because mm. both are important issues. Uh, we chose climate change as the theme because that, as, as horrible as war is, uh, I think climate change is a threat to the whole humanity. In fact, all living, all forms of life on the earth. So our emphasis this year is on climate change and what can I do uh, to make my life different to, uh, to, you know, through my actions to reduce the carbon footprint and try to avoid the climate change. In the past, we have had different themes, uh, the violence against women, uh, mm -hmm. against wars, uh, you know, all against, uh, for example, last year, we were focusing on indigenous uh, issues and uh, mm -hmm. the, the problem uh, of uh, the 
uh, unmarked graves, uh, which was a major issue last year. So we, we do try to cover a wide range of, of topics, but we always try to bring a Gandhian perspective to, to the issue. So for example, this year, uh, we are focusing on what Gandhi thought uh, for the environment uh, and how he professed to live simply so others can simply live. Uh, that, that was really an uh, important message. Thanks. Uh, and uh, keeping on the same trajectory, recently, very recent in the news, we learned that the founder of Patagonia, Ivo Shuinar, who's, uh, it's valued at 3 billion with annual profits of 133 million. And just recently, he donated his entire company and saying Earth is the only shareholder now. And he did this with the hope to fight climate and extinction crisis. And whoever knows about uh, Ivo Shuinard, we know that he is uh, committed and Patagonia is committed to protecting the environment. So I would like to hear from both of you. This is certainly wonderful news, very great news for climate change. So how do each of you feel about hearing this news about the founder of Patagonia, Ivo Schuinar, giving away his company? Uh, actually, I haven't, I have heard the news, but I haven't read about it. But I was delighted to hear that anybody would take such a, uh, such a major step. Uh, yes. it, it is wonderful news. Um, uh, but I don't have the details yet. It only happened yesterday, I believe. Yeah, um, I think uh, about a couple days ago. But I, I mean, I, I got, you know, bits and pieces here and there myself. But seeing that in this last summer alone, we've seen so many forest fires. We've seen flooding. We've seen earthquakes. We've seen hurricanes. And to have someone come forward and do this. And Shuinard has always been known for an environmentalist, philanthropist, and he's uh, quite an outdoor industry businessman. And many people have said that he has always been one to protect the environment. So for some people, this didn't come as a surprise. In fact, one past employee said when Shuinard found out he was on the Forbes list, he was very upset because he said to, to people, this, is, this isn't about money, what I'm doing. So it really goes to show you this is someone who got this the environment at their heart and that we all will benefit and hopefully we hope that others will come forward and we're not saying do exactly the same but we'll maybe take on uh take the next step carry on the legacy rama how do you feel about such a generous offer to help save our planet well, I think this is a very uh, great news. Uh, as Kursi said, I really haven't, uh, you know, uh, learned it. But I just, uh, uh, I mean, uh, very, I'm very happy. But I just want to mention it that anything and everything can be done, and that that, that that's a great side gift uh, to make a difference. And uh, my feeling is that climate change is like a train fully speed running as if we did not know it's coming. And even if you put a brake now, the train is going to cause have a keep running. It's scratching the surface, damaging, and making a lot of changes. So I think people do not realize that the climate change just is not the result of burning fuel. Even if there were no burning of fuel, our life habit, our population size alone, we have been denuding the earth left and right, changing it, putting, poisoning the environment. So I think I'm all for, all I'm saying is that we should not forget 
that no amount of money and doing and every amount of money and hard work and effort is necessary right now to stop the train is speeding up, is stopping it, the climate change. But looking at the long term, if we do not make changes in our lifestyle, how we live. Mm -hmm. And that's the Gandhian message. That is our purpose to promote the message. So it may look very small and simple and not worth bothering, you know, putting everything at the door of the government and the big organizations. We should not forget where the problem came from. And it is very important. It is a very great news that philanthropists are putting their money where it should make a difference. And government really have their tied hands because they want to be elected. They do not want to move as fast as they should. Mm -hmm. And our job is to empower ourselves. When I say save the planet, take the pledge, and we will talk about that later, our purpose is to empower ourselves individually as a community to push the government. So it is a great news, as you said, that such a big donation has been made. But I think that it is a long-term commitment to yes. change the lifestyle which is needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, your keynote speaker this year is uh, Don McLean. He's a lifelong environmental activist, educator, and community leader. And the, um, the speaker will be on Saturday, October 1st, from 10 to 2 p.m. So for those of us who wouldn't be there in person, can we get this virtually at all to hear your keynote speaker? No? Mm. We, we haven't arranged that, but I think it's a very good idea. If somebody else suggested that as well, okay. uh, we'll certainly consider that possibility. <clears throat> Right, so right. One of the idea is that Kursi, we can, uh, you know, videotape it and uh, quickly edit and make it available. Yes, you can certainly make it available on the website. Yeah. But I think a live broadcast may be a little more tricky because of the uh, surroundings. But anyway, yes. we'll try. So Rama and Kursi, the festival is usually... Uh, twinned with the annual Mahatma Gandhi Lectures on Nonviolence, which is sponsored by the Center for Peace Studies. And earlier on, we talked about what the center does. So just for our listeners to know that there's a lot going on in that weekend. But I'm going to ask you first, Rama, what are the goals of the, the festival? And then I'll ask Kursheed to say a little bit on that. So I'm assuming that uh, the goal of the festival, you know, this year, because in the long term, the objective and aims we talked about, this year our theme is climate change, what can I do? And um, festival has always worked in cooperation and uh, with the Center for PC Study. And one of the best examples of that cooperation is that uh, we suggest them, and it has generally been followed, they choose a, a speaker, Gandhi lecturer, at the center on the theme which has been chosen by the Gandhi Peace Festival. Mm -hmm. So our Gandhi lecturer this year is a learned and known international scholar on climate change, Dr. Ali. And then, since he's not going to be at the Peace Festival in the past, Gandhi lecturers have also been there in the same week. They give a lecture at McMaster and they also appear at the Gandhi Peace Festival. Since Dr. Ali is not able to appear, so we chose Don McLean, a local environmentalist, to speak at the, mm -hmm. at the Peace Festival. So we really work together. And Peace Center uh, is a program, interdepartmental group. It's not a department and it has a director. And uh, we have always been working with them and uh, all the activities are on their website. So we, we really uh, work with the Gandhi committee which select the Gandhi lecturer. And in fact, over the years, Center for Peace Study working with 
the peace festival has been hailed as one of the best examples of university community engagement, really. So this year, our focus is to stay with the theme for a few years and not change next year. And through the year, not just wait for the next year's festival, do whatever we can through the community, through speakers, through communication. And what my idea was always, and this idea I started in 19, uh, 2019 with Gandhi's 150th anniversary, that we need to start a conversation. It's time not to just listen, lecture and talk and appreciate and go home and say it's worth listening and following, but actually start a local and national conversation on topics of interest, which means this year climate change, conversation on life enhancing values. And that sounds more general, but now I'm saying you start the conversation on climate change, empower yourself, yes. ask your neighbors, push the government and do what needs to be done. So that is the goal. The goal is actually push climate change engagement with the people and the public as much as possible. All is there. So Rama and Kurshid, I'll move into a, a, a hot area here, which actually always warms my heart when I hear about Indians in the diaspora embracing Gandhi and his teachings and his principles. And Rama, we'll start with you. You have some very interesting observations to share about this. Would you like to share it with us here? Uh, sure. I mean, yesterday, uh, as I just mentioned, and over the years, it has occurred to me that uh, um, in the, I, I grew up in a generation and uh, many people from my generation is, uh, here around the world, they worship Gandhi, they, they symbolize Gandhian values as the Indian values. And, uh, and they don't you know, look at his fault. I mean, we are all human and we believe that uh, even our gods have fault. So we, we do not try to focus on that. Uh, but I have noticed two major change. One is that if you think about the current generation and even the older generation, especially of people outside India, and I have been to Australia and many places and here, uh, among the, particularly among people from India and particularly among Hindus, and I have no fear of mentioning it, uh, there is a general negative feeling about Gandhi because particularly people from Punjab, Gandhi reminds them Pakistan, India, division, uh, blood, partition, and uh, they blame everything on Gandhi. And my feeling is that without going into history, it's the result of partly uh, lack of knowledge, lack of history, but it's also partly effect of just anger, the people who have suffered, whose families have suffered, and they want to put a, a blame, a finger. So rather than knowing the history, who is responsible for partition, whether it was Nehru or Patel or others or Gandhi. Gandhi is easier to put a finger on because he is seen as the head of the Indian independence movement. So a lot of Indians, at least in, in Canada and in Hamilton, I have no, generally do not look at Gandhi favorably. And the contrast is the Indian diaspora who got out of India before independence to Trinidad, to Guyana, to, to various countries in Africa. Invariably, I have heard much tremendous reverence and praise about Gandhi and Gandhian values. And I have always wondered why is that? And in my mind, I'm not saying that this is the right reasoning and, and analysis. In my mind, because the people who got out of India before the partition, Gandhi's name does not remind them immediately of only India, Pakistan, Hindu, Muslim, partition, and blood. They are reminded of values, Indian values, which they cherish very much. 
And when you are leaving your country, when you are anywhere, you want to hold on to those values. So God is symbol mm -hmm. of life. And I see clear cut difference between the diaspora of the older generation. And no matter where they have come back to Canada, when I meet them, I see a different person, different uh, interpretation of Gandhi than our own people from our generation, younger generation. So I think that's part of the battle to communicate that we must differentiate between history. Mm -hmm. and the ideas were played through India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan do not define Gandhi. If yeah. Gandhi left South Africa, his nonviolent movement would not be any less. So we yeah. should not blame, we should differentiate between the artist and the medium he uses to produce an art. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the difference that Gandhian ideas are coming back, partly because now we are appreciating that we have been caught up with so-called progress in life. And yeah. Yeah, uh, and now Gandhi is saying that there is a price to pay for that. We 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 just can't run away with all the big technology and the progress. So yeah. I think it's interesting dialogue which we don't get a chance to talk and discuss. Mm -hmm. And I I personally feel that that's part of Gandhi festival and should be that should be the part of conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, very good. Thank you, Rama. And Kurshid, have you made that observation that Indians from the diaspora really embrace uh, Gandhi's teachings and principles and they want to learn more about it? I mean, I know that this is not a Gandhi festival, it's a peace festival, but I I just uh, heard this observation and Rama and I talked about it and I wondered how you felt about that. Did you notice that at all? Um, I think there's some truth to that, that uh, the Indians, uh, or in fact, any uh, people who migrate out tend to carry their original ideas. And while the country changes, we hang on to our values. Yes. We, uh, we are of the generation who were born immediately after the independence and heard horror stories of the British rule and how Gandhi managed to bring us independence without violence, without uh, firing a shot. I mean, that was a major achievement considering how cruel the, the colonials were. Mm -hmm. But there's more to it. Um, and by the way, Gandhi was uh, always against the partition of India and Pakistan. He, he went on fast and he, he, he didn't want the, any part of the partition. So there is certainly a misunderstanding about it. But I think uh, there is more to it. And I, you know, it may not be politically correct, but I have to say it. Uh, the current political climate in India is against Gandhi. They are the descendants and supporters of the RSS philosophy. And RSS was the one that assassinated Gandhi. They were not happy with Gandhi's peaceful ways. They wanted to use violence and they, you know, they had strange ideas, but certainly they were not in favor of Gandhi. And they got rid of Gandhi and they have always been trying to get rid of Gandhian ideas. Uh, up until recently, let's say 15 years ago, uh, they were in the background and uh, they didn't have enough influence. But now with the present government, it's a different uh, reality altogether. Uh, the, the present government uh, is very careful not to criticize the, the uh, Mahatma Gandhi, but they criticize everything around him. And they, they really want to create this nationalism, this sort of Hindu fundamentalism, as the, the major political philosophy. And it's very unfortunate because it's dividing the country, it's setting us back uh, and uh, uh, it's changing the thinking. They're really changing the history. The, the history books mm. have changed already and uh, the importance of Gandhi and uh, yes, you know, 75 years seems like a long time, but those of us who remember how atrocious the British war as colonials, yes. have to remember that Gandhi played a tremendous role. And not only 
did he bring independence to India, but I think he set, uh, he create, opened a new chapter in resolving conflicts. And in fact, yeah. he is more popular in other countries like Martin Luther King followed him, uh, Mandela followed him, and uh, a lot of other people around the world revere Gandhi for what he offers as a political solution. Uh, so, and, and also the role of individual. And coming back to this year's theme, um, uh, again, it, taking the Gandhian idea, if we don't wait for the world to change or the governments to, to, to make changes. Of course, the governments have a major responsibility. The corporations have a major responsibility, but we too as individuals can make a difference um, mm -hmm. yes. in the way we live and in the way we in, in, uh, influence the world. So I, I very much think that the Gandhian ideas may seem obsolete to some, but I think they are very much alive, they're very important. And as we, uh, we enter this era of climate catastrophe, it really becomes obvious that Gandhi had a vision a hundred years ago, and he saw that industrialization, unchecked capitalism is going to cause these problems. And he said that very clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Kershi. And, you know, I agree with both of you. Um, the folks that weren't born in India, but we still have the culture, we have the music, we have the temples, uh, folks read from the Bhagavad Gita. We tend to hold on to it because we've already, we feel like we've lost so much that we don't want this to be taken away from us. So I really thank both of you for your views on that. Now we're gonna uh, pivot a little bit more and uh, we're gonna talk a bit about the scholarship. And here I would like to draw attention to Ramnarine Sahadio. And just a, a little intro on Ram. Uh, Ramnarine Sahadio, descendant of indentured servants, was born in Leguan, Guyana. He's now a retired lawyer in Ontario, Canada. He's the author of Mohandas K. Gandhi, Thoughts, Words, Deeds, and his inspiration, the Bhagavad Gita. Ram Narayan initiated the Mahatma Gandhi Scholarship at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. So Rama, can you tell us a little bit more about this scholarship? Yes, uh, first I was uh, really Ramji, uh, Ram Narayan, uh, Sadev Nam Ryan. He used to attend the Gandhi Peace Festival and uh, Every year he will book this little nice pocket book, Gita, and he will distribute it. And he also uh, donated me a few copy of his book. And over the years I got to know him. And then um, it was a few years later that he showed his interest in his starting a scholarship. And I think that was a wonderful idea, really, that besides the uh, the uh, Gandhi lectures and Gandhi Peace Festival and everything else we have trying to do. The idea is to actually make in the university some mechanism to help a student and, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to promote Gandhian idea. So I think that I was very pleased when I heard from him that he's interested. He made himself, uh, we will put in touch and in the McMaster University uh, Development Office, and we went to his office in Brampton, talked to his friends. And uh, I'm very pleased that he himself donated his friends, and uh, his sizable money has been donated, and I think it is open for, for the funds to grow, and uh, that his scholarship has been awarded over the last, uh, you know, uh, three, four years. So okay. really something wonderful that people can donate to the scholarship uh, because the more money is, the more students can benefit from it. Yes. And there's no better way to promote Gandhian ideas to, than to really help a student, those who cannot afford. And yeah. these students find a way, usually they are people who are 
less fortunate and uh, they need the money. So I'm very mm-hmm. pleased that I have been very proud to know Ramji over the years and uh, he comes to the festival every year. And uh, through him, uh, we have got to know many of his friends. Yes, and uh, we have to do a big shout out to Ramji, Ram Narayan Sahadya, because he connected us here today. So thank you, Ramji. Thank you. And uh, Rama, if someone would like to donate to the scholarship, how can they do that? Actually, that uh, I will forward you, uh, and every year there is a link from Max Master. They okay. send it to thank you all the donors. So this year, uh, that well, I will forward, and it has a link to donation to Gandhi Lectureship and Gandhi Peace Festival. Okay. And it also has the other, and in that one can actually find the scholarship. So one can have a choice to donate to Gandhi Lectureship, to the Peace Festival, or to the, to the scholarship. So I, I will forward that to you, and you can... Uh, let people know. It is an all link donation. Yes, thank you. And I believe I, I may have uh, that link uh, as yeah. well from uh, one time back in January when I interviewed Ramji about his book, which we just mentioned. So absolutely, um, you can certainly but, but send it to who, who cannot use the link and want to write a check, uh, you know, you have my address. I mean, we can always... Uh, yes. All, all donations are tightly adaptable. Uh, and we get out to McMaster University uh, with the interest of Memo Gandhi Festival or Gandhi Lecture or whatever. So we will give you the details. Yes. yes. Thank you for that. Uh, Kurshid, can you um, tell us a little bit of who uh, were the recipients? of the scholarships, like what do you have to be studying? What do you have to be doing in order to qualify for the SPI scholarship or the Gandhi scholarship? Actually, I think Rama, you will be in a better position to yeah. answer that. No, uh, okay. actually, I, I do not have the, the exact wording, but uh, the, uh, this, uh, the scholarship is uh, in the Peace Center and, and Peace and Social Justice Program, and that's a, a new name, mm-hmm. have the requirement of students having taken courses and pursuing, uh, you know, Gandhian ideas and nonviolence. And also, if I'm not wrong, it has some requirement of uh, mm-hmm. something for bursary. So students are chosen every year, and the scholarship. Uh, one year it was it started to be announced at the Peace Festival. Mm-hmm. Then it was changed and announced at the Gandhi Lecture. But university has a designated day where all the scholarships are announced. So I'm not sure whether this year the announcement of the student who will get the scholarship will be made uh, at the university or at the Gandhi Lecture. But mm-hmm. that information is also available. Uh, I, 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 there is a flyer I can then send it around. Oh, great. Thank you so much for that, Rama. And uh, with respect uh, to your time, and I want to um, be cognizant of that. I know you both have busy schedules. Before we close off uh, today's discussion, and I am very much enjoying it. Thank you for that. Kushid, what takeaway, what would you like our listeners to take away from our talk today? Well, uh, I guess the most important thing I would say is study Gandhi, look at his ideas and see how those ideas uh, have uh, an everlasting value and impact. And I think we uh, we can learn a lot and, and do a lot in our lives. Uh, you know, people often think that climate change or the world peace is too big an issue for me. What can I do? I'm just one individual. Well, Gandhi was just one individual and look what he did to the world. So I think it's, it's all everybody working together that brings the change. And 
And as Gandhi said that, be the change you want to see in the world. And I exactly. think that is important is for us to learn and adopt those values and those ideas and try to make the world a better place, starting from our family, our neighborhood and our community. Well said, thank you, Kurshid. And Rama, what are your final thoughts about today's talk and about the Peace Festival? What do you want the beautiful people of Newfoundland and Labrador and beyond to know? Well, I want to say something about which is, uh, uh, you know, more general. I mean, we want, I say the best gifts you can give to your children, your grandchildren, they talk to them. <laughs> right. Talk to them. And what do you want to talk to them? We all have values. That our values can be our present country, our, uh, you know, past country where we came from. And in the history of every nation, every group, there are two threads. The thread of peacemaking and the threat of, uh, you know, a bravery fighting injustice. And India is no exception. India, in fact, has been priding in the world. What we call Hinduism was not written for Hindus. Those Vedas were not for Hindus. Our ideas were universal, humanity. So what Indians pride on, in every temple we worship, you know, Sarve Bhavantu Sikhna, Sarve Santu Niramaya, let everybody be happy, let everybody be healthy, let everybody be, you know, uh, so on. And Gandhi summed that all up, Sarvoda, welfare of all. So all I'm saying is that wherever you are, whether you came from India today or yesterday or where you are here, have been here, it doesn't matter what your faith is. Gandhi is a name, is a symbol of an idea. Mm -hmm. And in the same category, whether you talk about Martin Luther King, Mandela, Mother Teresa, whosoever. Talk to your children and your grandchildren about doing good today in the community. Fight for justice. Without values, we are nothing. Talk about life enhancing values. Where we came from, all over the world, we had our own values. Values yes. grew in local environment. They helped us survive. Now we live together in a multicultural society. If we do not agree on a universal set of values, mm -hmm. we are doomed to die. So my help, I talk to my own children, be proud of your root. We are not rootless. We are not like a fallen leaf. But your root should have something about peace. It doesn't matter where you come from, what your faith is. Mm -hmm. So I want people to think about Gandhi in that line. That one man, if one man in the world, if one Einstein could change the world, one Mother Teresa could tell the world how to serve, one Gandhi could tell the world, and it takes only one to show what we are capable of. Mm -hmm. so I want people to have that sense of pride. If you don't have a sense of pride, you cannot teach. And you don't have to fight with people to convert them. Let's talk to them. Yes. That's all you can do. Uh, Dr. Singh and Dr. Ahmed, I really want to thank you so much for this opportunity today. I certainly found it, uh, our discussion today very interesting. I learned a lot and I know our listeners have to. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot be there for the festival, but maybe one day, and if there is something posted virtually, we can all certainly see it at that time. So thank yeah. you so very much again. And um, I hope maybe in the future uh, we can connect and you know you're welcome to come to Newfoundland anytime, right? Thank, Thank you, you very much, Sarojini, for inviting us. It was wonderful talking to you and your listener, and I'm sure there will be an opportunity. If tell them if they ever come to Hamilton, maybe we would like to meet them and uh, talk to them. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And I know the weather is very beautiful there. So thank you so much again. And uh, maybe we'll see you sometime in the near future, right? Sure, sure. Thanks thank very much you. for taking time and inviting us.
Thank Bye-bye. you. Our pleasure. Thanks. Our pleasure, Kershit.